a thorough and diligent God. You go about your work and you do it in us and you make us to look just like your son, perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name. All right. So this is part three, surprise, of Jehovah Shalom, which um, last time I told you the definition, our working definition for last time's Jehovah Shalom was perfect fruition of everything in right relationship with each other. So tonight, the word that we're going to focus on is actually integration, and I'm very excited because God is just bringing it all together. <coughs> Did you get it? Did you get my joke? Anyway, but that excites me a lot when he's sh showing me how everything fits together so well that I just Mm. And then he gives me a joke as well. But the joke, maybe he just wanted to giggle at me, so I'm fine with that too. All right. So the, this idea of integration, it's just the, the way of saying in one single word, perfect fruition of all things in right relationship with each other. That's what the word integration is. Wholeness, soundness perfection, completeness. So we are going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about um, integration in the five areas of life. This is, this is where God is working his integration in, um, in our spirits, in our souls, in our bodies, in our relationships, and in our finances or how he is training us to be stewards. So I actually, I think I would like to take, I have my board because I want to write a couple of things down. But I'm not sure how to do this in a way that's gonna make, here, yes, I need my lovely assistant. My name is Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Vanessa. I thought you were Van. <laughs> oh, I did my B. <laughs> Obstruction. What is going to happen because of that obstruction? 
probably a heart attack. Um, it's the same way in every area of our life. We can have obstructions in every area of our life. They will be um, an obvious spiritual obstruction is sin itself. It blocks it blocks us. It, give, it makes separation between us and God. Not that he isn't with us, but that we can't see him, we can't hear him in the same way. Um, obstructions in our souls, our minds, our wills, and our emotions. Go sit somewhere else if you're going to do that. Go sit back here. We have, in our minds, we have thought patterns that are unhealthy, that there are lies that we believe, things that we don't even know that we're believing because they have been normal the whole our whole lives. Things that we were told growing up that we um, were told this is just the way it is and we believe that, okay, well this is just the way it is or this is the way I am or this is the way the world is or this is just the way God is. I can think of uh, a thing but, that's been structured, like yeah. financial. It has to do with your, that book your mother read years ago about different classes and how um, how different classes of people will handle uh, like money a lot differently. So if, if if my parents when they came over from America had very little money, but they were they were brought up in a certain way and with certain thought patterns about money, and so they saved. My mom uh, scrimped on what she fed us. I mean, she fed us plenty. But it just, you know, it wasn't the good and fancy stuff, um, and so on. And and so then they gradually built wealth and, you know, bought a house and, and so on. Um, but then there are other people who, when they come into a little bit of money, say they've been in the lottery, that money will be gone. They, they, they might have a million dollars, and they won't know what to do with it, because they have, like, an obstruction, like, way of thinking about their finances that just makes them fail. So poverty isn't actually a circumstance, it is an attitude. And our circumstances reflect what is going on in us. And the same is true all over the place, not just in our finances. Um, our emotions, souls being mind, will, and emotions, we can have emotional obstructions and those are just as, they can have very detrimental physical effects. Um, relationships. I bet you can probably think of some obstructions you've got in relationships right now where, where there needs to be restoration, where there needs to be forgiveness, where it's just really hard and you wish you could talk to somebody and you can't. And yes, we covered it cover the financial part. Thank you. So, part of peace, in the definition, when I first looked it up, part of peace is this action of bringing things back into right, uh, rightness. And it actually, um, the definition expands and extends into justice. Think of the action of bringing something that is out of alignment into alignment, that is justice. And justice and peace are so inextricably related because of that. Um, I would say that justice is that action of bringing things into alignment, bringing them back into peace. Um, so you can think of that going forward. But there is there is, as I was thinking about it, I realized that there is a process that I think God uses over and over to, to bring us into this completeness and into soundness. So this process will be applied to every place where there is an obstruction. And um, in, in a word, you can call it sanctification, actually. Um, if the action of peace is justice, like I said, um, and because of what Jesus has done for us, 
we have been actively brought into the kingdom of God, that would be our justification. Goes with justice, is that action. Um, but God expanding his peace into every little avenue of our lives, I believe, is sanctification. So we are already justified. We have been made right with God. But he is then working in us to will and to do for his good pleasure to grow us up into the likeness of his son in every little area, and that would be sanctification. And so here is the process that I have um, started, started thinking about. This may not be completely comprehensive, but we're gonna start with it. <clears throat> First, we have Revelation. Um, can someone look up for me Psalm 119, 130? Uh, someone else look up for me at Luke 138. Yes, you can do that. 
The next thing that will happen in, in, this, um, in this process, I believe, is the conviction, the conviction that will follow after the agreement. Though some of these might, they could be mingled together, and maybe it depends on the situation. I'm not sure how all the steps fit together, but I know that they're all in there, so I'm gonna talk about them. Okay, so somewhere in the word, it says that the Holy Spirit comes and he convicts the nations in righteousness. But he doesn't just, just do it to nations. He will come and convict our hearts too. So um, sometimes the Lord reveals things and it's not quite so direct. Sometimes we hear a truth in a way that we haven't heard it before. And we say, oh Lord, that's so good. Yes, I agree with that. And then God says, all right, now that you agree with that truth, we're going to take it and we're going to drive it home. And then he applies it to you. And because you have agreed with him, you can be convicted. If you don't agree with him in the first place, is there really going to be any conviction going on? Probably not. Probably not. So, um, the Holy Spirit convicts the nations in righteousness. If you find the reference for that and want to shout it out so everybody could have it, that would be great. But I... Neglected to write that one down. Let me pull this stick to this. Okay, so we have conviction. All right, and after conviction comes repentance. We've talked about that a lot. When the Lord convicts you of something, or convicts us of things, then our response is to change our minds, to agree with what he said. 16.8, faith says, when he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. Is that what you mean? Yeah, that's the one. What can you say again? 16.8. Of what? John. Sorry. John 16.8. Talking about conviction. <laughs> okay. So then when God convicts us, we can, we can then repent of that particular thing. We can change our mind and say, Lord, I see what you are saying to me about this thing, and I am changing my mind to agree with you that what I've got going now is me missing it. I am missing what you would have for me in this situation. And that is, that's the definition of sin, missing the mark. God, you have this for me here, and I'm completely missing it. So we can repent. Does that ever happen? That doesn't happen to you, Brian, does it? <laughs> and, of course, then, uh, the main scripture I've got written down for repentance is um, Matthew 4.17. Jesus went around proclaiming, Repent! For the kingdom of God is at hand. And that, that is the whole point. We want the kingdom. If we want to enter the kingdom and see what's going on there and operate it, we've got to be living a life of repentance. All right. Coming after repentance is confession. I think this is close on the heels of it. Confession. It's, it's saying aloud to God what he has just shown us. Like, God, you, you've seen this about me, and you've shown me this, and this is what I have done, and this is how I have sinned in this way. And we've got uh, 1 John 1, 9. Does anybody have that? Oh, I have. just 
to forgive us all unrighteousness. Now, here's a fun little thing about that. We confess our sin to him. We call it what he calls it. We say, God, I have done this. This is how I've missed it. This is how I've sinned. I confess to you that I have done this. He forgives us that sin, and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So he is, he is doing a work in us to bring things to light. But he also has it covered because you know what we're not gonna we're not gonna re, we're not gonna realize one hundred percent of our stuff before we leave this earth. He's like, no, I'm faithful. I will cleanse you of all the unrighteousness. But then why does he why does he show us the obstructions? Because he wants us to be free in those places. He wants us to walk in freedom. So confession, First John one nine, not two nine. Our minds are renewed. 
Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So, there are just a couple, couple, two more verses that really, that kind of encapsulate what has, what this process looks like. And they are John 16, 13, and John 8, 32. And if you've got them and you want to read one or both, okay, you have the second one. All right, I want the first one first. Yeah, John 16, 13. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Thank you. Mommy. And Mommy. If Jesus said to them, said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Yes. Yes. All right. Those two verses really, I had in my own notes, I had John 16, 13 up here, and John 8, 32 down here. It's like, it's like a revelation through transformation sandwich. This is the process. Because his, he gave us his spirit to guide us into his own truth, to show us everything about himself. And when we continue in it, we will know the truth. In all those little areas, it's going to, he's gonna break up the obstructions. He's going to just plow through them. Or whatever, whatever connections have just been broken. He is going to repair and restore those things and bring them back into wholeness because that he is the God of integration. He is the God of wholeness. Now, another thing that I want to say about this process is that it is, it is not prescriptive. It is descriptive. So I'm not saying to you, do you see this list? Now go and work on that. Go and, you need to go home and try harder to do that. And take two aspirin and call me in the morning. <laughs> that, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this is the process that the Holy Spirit does work in you. And that is an empowerment and a freedom that is much different. Well, it is power and freedom, whereas me saying, see these things, this is a nice list, you need to go home and try to do it better. That's not power, and that's not freedom. That's another form of bondage. So my good news for you tonight is look at this stuff. This is what God is doing in you already. He's doing it in you right now. And me saying that to you is number one, revelation. Did you catch it? So there is, there is a lot of hope. There is a lot of cool stuff. All of these areas of your life, whatever things you are grieving, whatever things you are mourning, whatever things feel hopeless in all of these areas here, they're not, because he is doing this. He is at work in you to will and to do for his good pleasure. All of this stuff, it's going on in here. But this is why, this is why I love for us to pray for each other, because we need support. This is why Jesus came as a person, because we need the contact. We need each other for this stuff. So, whenever you need support in an area. Um, I, I think it's in James that says, confess your sins one to another that you may be healed. When you notice, oh, I am missing it, and I need some support. That's a, that's a reason that we're here. We don't, we don't only do it on Sunday mornings with general confession. If there's something that is weighing on your heart, it is the pressure of the Lord. 
It's the eternal weight of glory. Sometimes it doesn't feel very nice. You need to call somebody because confession brings deliverance. So that is my, my hope, my good news for you tonight. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much. You are so awesome. Thank you for, for all of the ways that you are searching us out to make us more like your son and to make us into freer people. You are recreating every little piece, avenue, every little thought pattern and behavior, attitude. You are, you are retraining our behaviors so that we can look just like your son and walk in complete freedom. You are so awesome. Thank you for being the God of integration. Thank you that when you look at us, you see wholeness. You see completeness in us. Father God, open our eyes so that we can see it too. And so that we can walk about in your kingdom. In the light of your dear son. And, and be free. And love you better and love the people around us better. You are so awesome. Thank you for everything. We love you. Amen. I forgot something. This is important. Thank you. This is a PS. Um, there is a song that I learned when I was growing up in the Miracle Center. Um, and I thought of it today, and it goes so perfectly with this idea. It's very simple. And I think, um, no, it's almost more simple than that. See if you catch, if you catch a certain idea. I'll ask you afterward. Okay, the song goes like this. He is our peace who has broken down every